Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of more of measurement. So let us just start with the contents of today's session. So today in this session we are going to see introduction to the mode of measurement, general rules of measurement and principles of unit items. Today we are going to see three topics. So let us start our discussion with introduction to mode of measurement. So students, till now we have used IS code mainly in the structural subjects. But do you know that in quantity estimation there are also IS code being used. Yes, in our uh, quantity estimation process there are IS codes are to be followed. There are some general set of rules which we require to be followed. So, IS 1200 part 1 to 28 is the IS code which we use in quantity estimation. The IS code is named as method of measurement of building and civil engineering works. Yes, students, IS 1200 is having 28 parts. Part 1 to 28 and all the parts or the title of the code is Method of Measurement of Building and Civil Engineering Works. So let us let me just uh, brief you about the parts that uh, let me just brief you about what is mode of measurement, what we are discussing here. So uh, we are discussing about in the construction industry, measurements are of immense importance. If you are working as a contractor's engineer, if you are working as a client engineer, if you are a quantity estimator, if you are a, if you are a surveyor, quantity surveyor, if you are a cost consultant, the uh, quantity is a uh, quantity measurement is one of the important part. So while in the practice you must need to follow the Indian standards set up by the Indian government in order to measure particular item of work. Yes, it is not like you can follow of your own method for measuring an item of work. There is a separate method being set up by the IS standards. So that is known as uh, uh, this IS one two double zero. So you need to follow this. So you are, if you are at any level in the construction, this is one of the important topics. So yes, part one is for the earthwork in excavation. Part two is for the foundation concrete. Part three is for brickwork. Part 4 is for homework, part 5 is for clustering and pointing, part 18 you take for demolition, part 23 is for the uh, piling work, then there is a road work, wood work, every, you, you imagine a smaller item of work, there is an uh, IS code for it, IS 1200 for it, which is being included in this IS uh, 1200 part 128. So in case you Want the soft copies of this IS code for your reference? Just uh, contact me in my mail or my number. I'll uh, provide you. So let us uh, start now. What is mode of measurement? Why it is so much importance? So measurement of the works has very much importance in the uh, planning and the execution part of the civil engineering. From the time of the initial estimate, first estimate of the work, up to the final completion of the work and the settlements of the payment measurements are involved in every stage. Yes, students, just have, just we have discussed that that if you are if you are uh, preparing an initial estimate or if you are preparing a bill or if you are checking up a bill or you are a client's engineer or if you are a contractor's engineer, these measurements you have to follow. So this measurement has very much importance from the first estimate to the execution and then in the final settlement of the payments. So I hope we are clear about it. Moving forward, the method followed for the measurement of the different item of works are not uniform and the practice is prevalent differ considerably between the two states. Even in the same, uh, same state, the different department does not follow the same method for the measurement of an item of work. The different departments of the central government of India and also the state uh, state governmental department mainly adopts the 
method of I, uh, IS methods for the measurement of the work in general for uniformity throughout the India. This eliminates the ambiguities and misunderstandings of various systems followed. Students, sometimes it may happen that the method of measurement which is being followed in Gujarat is not the same which is being followed in Maharashtra. It, it can be different. Also, in a same state, the method of measurement for the road work is not as the same as for the method, method of measurement of the building work. The different departments or different, uh, uh, different private companies operate in a different way. But this can create a lot of problems. So, central government, departments of the central government and the state government are mainly following the IES methods to uh, remove such misunderstanding and ambiguities of the, uh, by using these different methods. So, why they are following this IES method? It is something special. What are the reasons? Let us see. So, here are the purposes of standardizing the measurement and the deduction. The first purpose is for the uniformity in taking the measurement. By using the same method, you can have the uniformity in taking the measurement. Second is for accuracy in taking the measurement. Yes, by following the same method everywhere, you can have the accuracy in taking up the measurement. The next is to avoid the ambiguities in taking the measurement. And the last is to properly define the item. With the same method everywhere, you can proper you can run the item of work very properly. So I hope we are clear about what is mode of measurement, what IS code is being used and why it is so much important. Moving forward, let us discuss some of the general rules of the measurement. So starting with the rule number one, let us see. So the rule number one is saying that each item shall be fully described and shall include wherever necessary all the materials, transporting, loading, unloading, stacking, storing, waste handling, necessary scaffolding, safety appliances, lighting at the place of work, labor required to complete the job in its size, shape, fixing, fitting in the position, cutting, waste and all other incidental operations wherever necessary. Yes, this are great. Is a very long statement of rule number one of the general measurement. It said that each item shall be fully described and whenever necessary, all the material details of material transporting, loading, unloading, transporting, stacking, waste handling, uh, safety appliances, lighting at work, labor required for the completion of the job, it's, uh, within its safe, shy, fixing in position, cutting, waste. Uh, and other uh, similar uh, other similar operations wherever this is uh, required. So students, the rule number one is trying to say that whenever you are defining the item, you must define that uh, regarding the details about the material transporting. If, if it is including the loading, unloading, what is the what should we do with the waste or the labor should be uh, finish the job up to which accuracy and so and so. So that is our rule number one. Let us see rule number two. So rule number two is one of the basic and important student being in civil engineering. You should remember this all the times that order of booking the dimension, order of the taking of the dimensions always length, breadth, height or depth or the thickness. Whenever you are preparing a measurement sheet, your order of the dimension should be L, B, and H. You cannot measure, you cannot write up, write H first, then L, and then B. Also, whenever you are measuring the dimensions of any particular item of work, unit of all of them should be same. L, B, and H. Because by multiplying L, B, and H, we are going to calculate the quantity. So, if L is in meter and B is in feet, you, are, you cannot the multiplication you cannot find the quantity. So another thing is unit of all the item of box or all the dimensions should be same. Let us see the rule number three. The rule number three is subjected that all the item of box should be measured nearest to the following tolerance. 
whenever you are measuring a dimension, whenever you are measuring a quantity, there should be some tolerance level or there should be some accuracy criteria that to be followed. So the dimensions shall be measured nearest up to 0.01 meter. The area shall be measured nearest up to 0.01 meter square. The volume or the cubical content shall be measured nearest up to 0.01 cubic meter and weight shall be worked out at nearest up to 0.001 ton. Yes, focus C. In tons, it is 0 0.001. Other than that, for dimension 0.01 meter, for area 0.01 meter square, for volume 0 0.01 cubic meter. So that are the tolerance level uh, by measuring any dimension. I hope we are clear up to this point. So moving forward to rule number 4. So the rule number 4 is continuing continue, continuing that about the tolerance level that the thickness of the RCC slab shall be measured nearest up to 0 0.005 meter. The thickness of the woodwork shall be measured nearest up to 0 0.002 meter. The thickness of the steel work should be measured nearest up to 0 0.001 meter. Here, the steel work, that means the steel angles or steel channels which we are using in the construction. The length of the reinforcement bar shall be measured nearest up to 0 0.005 meter and the diameter of that reinforcement bar should be measured nearest up to 0 0.001 meter. The next is, if the thickness of the road is less than the 20 centimeter, then its thickness should be measured nearest up to 0 0.005 meter. Areas shall be measured nearest up to 0 0.01 square meter as stated in rule number 3, but the area of the steel should be measured nearest up to 0 0.001 meter square. Volume should be measured nearest up to 0 0.01 cubic meter, but the volume of the woodwork shall be measured nearest up to 0 0.001 cubic meter. So I hope we are clear about the rule number 3 and 4. Pardon me, I have just told you the rule number 3 and 4. So moving forward with the rule, uh, with the rule number 5, that is same type of work under different condition shall be measured as a separate item and shall be measured separately. For example, if we are talking about the excavation, then excavation on normal ground or excavation under under the liquid mud or excavation under water or work under tides. So this kind of work, the work is same, excavation, but under different condition shall be measured differently as a separate item. So that is our rule number one. Let us see rule number six. In case of structural concrete, brick machinery or the stone machinery, the work under following categories shall be measured separately and the height should be mentioned. Yes. When you are doing the structural concrete, brick machinery or the stone machinery, the uh, you have to mention the measurements of the quantities of different levels from foundation level to plinth level, from plinth level to first floor level, from first floor level to second floor level and you have to mention the heights of different levels and the list goes on. So this is one of the important points when you are constructing a building, if it is G plus 10, then a brick work, brick work is there from G plus 10. So you cannot mention the entire quantity in a single in a single line. You have to mention floor by floor because with the increase in the number of floors, the rates will be different and the measurement will be changed. So you need to mention the separately from first to second floor, second to third, and so on. So I hope we are clear about rule number six. Now let us see the last rule number seven. The bill of quantities shall full, uh, shall be fully described. Materials, workmanship, method of preparation, proportions, and accurately define the execution of that item. Work which cannot be defined accurately or which requires the real time measurement after the work is being completed shall be marked as the provisional, which we have already learned as provisional quantities and provisional sum. That some of the quantities or some of the item of work cannot be measured at the time of preparing the estimate or we cannot know the details of uh, it while preparing the estimate so they shall be marked as provisional. So that is rule number 7. So I hope we are 
clear how to open this one. Now let us see the principles of unit items. So the first principle is that mass, voluminous, or thick work shall be measured in the unit of cubic meter, and the measurement shall be done by multiplying the length, breadth, and height or thickness or the depth of particular item of work. Yes, students. Principle of unit of item that in which units we can measure the quantity. So the first is voluminous. If any item of work is having three dimensional quantity, so by measuring length, width, and height or depth we, or thickness, we can have the cubic meter of that particular quantity. That is our principle number one. Let us see the second one. Thin, shallow, or surface quantity shall be measured in square meter. And the measurement of the length and breadth or breadth and height or length and height shall be taken and multiplied with each other to get the quantity square meter. Students, there are several quantities which are thin, which are which are uh, long enough and which are which are broad enough. So we have we have only two dimensions to measure. So such quantities shall be measured in meter square. The next principle is long. And three quantities should be measured in linear or running meter, and only linear dimension should be taken into the account. That is running meter. Sometimes the quantity is only the like the skirting, your flooring. Whenever you see a floor, there is a vertical portion attached at the bottom of the wall, that is known as skirting. So that skirting is very thin. There is no thickness of that type. So that is generally in the running meter or running feet. The linear dimension should be taken into account. So that is our third rule. The next is piece work or job work shall be enumerated so as they should be quantified in numbers. Sometimes the accessories of plumbing are being measured in the numbers, the number of taps or number of handles, number of glass. So these are the piece work or job work that are being quantified in numbers. So that is our rule number, uh, principle number four. And the last is. Special works such as steel work should be measured in weight so as kilograms or tons. So that is our fifth principle of uh, principle of unit. Students, in your book, only four principles are measured. This fifth principle of this weight is being not considered. So, but you we need to consider. So there are five rules, five principles of the measurement: voluminous or the mass quantity in cubic meter. Surface or two dimensional in square meter, uh, thin and lo longer uh, quantities in running meter, job work in numbers, and the special steel work in weight, kilograms or tons. So, I hope we are clear up to this point. So, in this session, we have studied about the IS code which are being used for the me method of measurement that is, IS part, IS 1200 part 1228. Then we have studied about the introduction to mode of measurement, purpose and importance of having standardized method for uh, method of measurement. Then we have seen the general rules of measurement, and just we have completed the principle of unit items. So now in the next session, we are going to study the rules of measurement and the reduction criteria for different item of works such as excavation, concrete, plaster, and brickwork. And we are going to uh, going to get into the detail of each and every item. So this is it. That was all about in today's session. In case of any query or doubt, you can always contact me in my mail or my number.